This is John Watts. I'm an Alabama consumer protection attorney, and this will be another video where we answer one of your questions. And we appreciate you sending questions in. Uh, that makes it very uh, easy for us to figure out what will actually be helpful to you. So please continue to do that. So the question is, I've been sued by a debt collector and they are going to use an affidavit in court. What does this mean? In other words, what is an affidavit? So an affidavit is a sworn statement, a written statement, and normally it is signed in front of a notary public. And you typically find a notary public at a bank, uh, maybe a, um, a FedEx store. Uh, a lot of businesses have notary publics. And it's basically to verify that it really is you signing this document. So normally you show them your driver's license, things like that. All right, so normally an affidavit is not allowed in a trial. And the reason is you cannot cross-examine a piece of paper. So the debt collector, collection lawyer comes in with this piece of paper and it says, here's my proof. Well, how do we know? How do we know that that's true? In our country, in our state, and we'll talk about a little exception here in a moment with small claims, but normally somebody has to appear live in court so that you can cross-examine them, or they have to appear by deposition, which is where you or your lawyer and the person that's testifying and a court reporter takes everything down under oath where you can question them, and that's where you can cross-examine them. But a piece of paper, an affidavit, you never had a chance to cross-examine that person. Now, in small claims court, a judge may decide to let in an affidavit in my experience with these debt collectors, we're talking about asset acceptance, LVNV funding, uh, Main Street, Midland funding, portfolio recovery, Unifund, these kind of big debt collectors, debt buyers that file collectively hundreds and hundreds of lawsuits a week just in Alabama. Normally the judges are not real sympathetic to them as they flood our courts with lawsuits and then they say, well judge, we can't bring a witness. There's like too many lawsuits we file. Well, the response is, maybe you should only file the number of lawsuits that you can actually prosecute. But anyway, they normally do not allow these in small claims court and certainly not in circuit court. District court, usually the judge will say, do you agree to allow an affidavit in? And if you represent yourself, you make your own decision. I'll tell you this, Whenever that's come up in one of my cases, we absolutely object to it. And the rules say in district court, they are not allowed unless you agree to it. So I personally would never agree to it. Okay, well, where are they used? Affidavits very often are used in a summary judgment motion. This is where the debt collector files a motion. That's a written request that says, okay, judge, there's no reason to have a trial because we have proved our case in our written arguments, usually called a brief, and our affidavits, that's their testimony. So if you get a summary judgment motion, there normally is an affidavit attached to it. Now it's beyond the scope of this video to talk about, well, what do you do then? I'll just say this, it's a very, very dangerous moment for you because if that summary judgment motion is granted, and it will be granted, unless you properly oppose it. So you have to oppose it procedurally in a correct way and substantively. So you have to actually make the arguments that show summary judgment's not due to be granted. But if it's granted, then that is a real judgment against you. The case is over. Sometimes people say, well, I want my day in court. Well, that was your day in court. They go, no, 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 I, I want to try my case in front of a judge or in front of a jury. Well, you don't get to if a summary judgment is entered. Summary judgment means they can garnish your wages, garnish your bank accounts, put a lien on your house, sell your house, all sorts of bad stuff. So we want to avoid it. So if you get a summary judgment motion, take it extremely seriously because it is a very serious matter that can result in you losing your case. So that is where affidavits are 
I'll say it this way. The debt collectors try to use them in every case, but summary judgment is where they are more properly used. Now, having said that, I personally have never seen a summary judgment motion where the affidavit is actually a valid affidavit. There are all sorts of problems with these affidavits. And so we attack them, or what's called a motion to strike the affidavit, because they're simply improper. But if you're representing yourself, you've got to make that determination. But just understand there are ways to attack these things, but treat them very seriously because this can result in a judgment against you. Well, I hope that that was helpful to you about affidavits and when they're used, what they are. Uh, if you have questions or comments, you can always put stuff below this video. If it's more of a personal question, you can call us 205-879-2447 or go to alabamaconsumer.com. There's a contact us button there. And if we can help you in any way, we'll be happy to do that. If you like this video, feel free to like it here on YouTube. Uh, you can share it, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you prefer to do. And uh, if you, you're more than welcome, leave a comment. Even if you don't like the video, leave a comment. Tell us what you disagree with or what you have questions about. And as always, we appreciate any feedback you give us and any uh, questions that you have for future videos. We'll either do them in this format or in a weekly Google Hangout type format. But feel free to give us questions and uh, we will do our best to answer those. Okay. Well, thanks for watching this and hope you have a great day.